ahoy there, I'm up well. because they ran out of electric uh, so now we can go in uh, as you can see we are going into the bunker too this is the bunker it's like going on the ride like a... What did you do? ticket. Where did you get the tickets? Hello. We have the standard ticket, the combined ticket with bunker number one. Yeah. Uh, it's a ticket. Yeah. Just, just, just today, yeah. Right, okay. I'm in now. Wow, this is a passage. So, this is number one. I, I'm in this bit here, and uh, I've got some soldiers looking at me. Hello, are you from here? Oh, of course, I am. But yeah, hello. And that's the soldiers. I mean, they like the moustaches. And that's their gun. Show us your gun. <laughs> yeah. Um, these are all the, probably all the people, sergeants. And that's the, I don't understand, but I'll show you. That's their uh, army, I think, yeah. And that must be their football team, I don't know. Oh, there they are. John Dong and other police forces after World War I. That's... That's all the police. That's the police force in those days, in the World War I. And, um, and uh, somebody got hanged by the looks of it. And that's their guns, the police guns. And that's the police force in the World War One. I know, uh, dictators. I know. So she. And that must be the leader from the police force. Uh, Right, I'm going to another 
bunker. This is uh, what it used to be like in uh, World War World War One. during the monastery years. No, no, no. 1928, the monastery years, that's the police force. to 
Oh, since the early years of the colonist regime, the Albanian police were used dogs to monitor the border as well as to catch thieves and fugitives. That must be the training or the dogs. As you can see, the coat, what that I showed you over there, what it's training the dogs. And that's all the barbed wire. Uh, from 1944 until October 1990, had run away through the Albanian border. Uh, 9.220 uh, persons and 4.472 of their relatives, women, children, etc., of whom 998 had died. Oh, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of people, and that's what they use the dogs and their sniper guns. Mm. And that's the people, border forces together with armed civilians. Nineteen seventy-six. Ah, oh. right, going for the other one. But that dog looks a wild vicious. Wouldn't like to uh, bump into that sort of dog. Right, I was just reading all about this. Anybody was, who ever tried to leave this country, they were killed. And if illegal immigrants come into this country, they were killed as well. So, um, so you cannot leave. If you leave, you were killed. If illegal immigrants come in, they were killed as well. So had no choice, uh, that's what it was. So they had, they got uh, dogs sat on police. And this is the history of 1945 to 1991. That's not that long ago. Um, according to which the National Police had the task of maintaining public peace and order, serving state properties and state en entries, uh, crimes in general, ensuring prison and places where persons under obfuscation, I can't say that, were kept carrying records for convicts and suspects, etc. So that was all. I mean, I can read it, but it would just take me ages to, you know, to read all this, because, um, the filming. which was trained, the unit called Sam, oh, Sam and Missile, what it, the Albanian Special Forces from the mid-1980s. So that was the Special Forces of, um, uh, this is what they used to wear. And they had that to uh, uh, batter people on the, yeah, and that's their police, police uniforms. And that 
that's why they were so pulling all the statues down is because the border was closed off and everybody was um, opening up the borders for us to come in. Yeah. That's only in 1991, um, that's the protest and they were knocking statues down and everything and that's the people, they just wanted to, you know, people's police force, the regime for keeping order and that used to be keeping order. this uh, darky bit here. Ooh, there they are. It's very, uh, very creepy. Oh, maybe this is the um, don't overpass. I wonder what. Ah. Very dark. Maybe this is a um, look at this door. Maybe this is uh, like a um, prison thing, keep people in here or something. I don't know. But yeah, it looks quite scary. It's quite cold in here as well. It's all right underground. I should see you this is the young girl. Um, her name is, I can't pronounce her name, but I put her name up there and it's quite a sad story. Um, as crazy as she was, they held her in a terrible dungeon at my... Then it was given to me, the opportunity to see her was in a state that I am not able not to describe the letter. Her front teeth were broken and because she was crazy, not herself, she did all her needs there and she was full of filth, so full of lice and worms. You could not approach her for the smell she released with the look she seemed like a witch, not like an 18 to 20 year old girl. Just sad. But Sinama, oh, I can't uh, pronounce that, uh, officers continued to question her, even in this situation, but as I learned, she didn't even tell a thing, even with all the barbaric torture, they must have tortured her, and they did, they did to her, so they became sure that it was not that was not guilty, but on the condition that she was, that she was, they could not release her and therefore put her out the dungeons and in a good room with air and sun on the upper floor, feeding her well, and now that she could get better and then release her, but she still continued to be mentally insane. And one day in the abnormal way that she was jumped out of the window of her room, on the 8 to the 10 metres high, broke her leg and arm and in this condition was taken to the hospital. After a few weeks I learned that in this hospital they need to cut her the arm and the leg and that she had died insane. Oh. I could not learn that the name of this companion of this party member who was so terribly tortured but for this and other details of this crime should be asked in the first captain, uh, I can't say that, now in the offices of the Division Command of People Defence, who at that time was the former Deputy Commissioner of the Battle, um, I'll just show that there, can't uh, pronounce that, Brigade of MP, and the past isn't in torturing her. What's sad? I mean, just think having a daughter and she's only young, a teenager, and they did that to her. It's very, very sad. Violence from the uh, beginning of 12 shooting in one day. It's 
must be uh, a con miss. this and the Sagamis are, the, are like the SS and they have people uh, if you don't some, if somebody don't like somebody like somebody don't like their neighbours they start whispering and then they get arrested and it's just a bit like the SS and it's it, it's quite sad if um, they, they would turn on each other um, uh, turn on if you don't like that person over there because they're different they will get arrested it's, it's all a bit like the SS this is what it's like and I will show you I can't read it all because it takes so I haven't got much on my film but I will show you and you'll be able to read read this all about it and apparently it could be still going on to this day this I should take you filming around This is how paranoid the regime was. They put bucks in everything to listen, to listen on people. Um, this is what they put all in. It could be anything from this to their clothes, uh, to their ornaments, pictures. Anywhere they put the bucks because they were so uh, paranoid. And uh, yes. Um, See, there wasn't that happy sort of thing. I'm not surprised. Sad, really. Um, yeah. At the restaurant, the trains, the cinema, at the, the buses. Closing equipment for me, uh, for Arsenal. And that, this is how paranoid they were. Now, your neighbour, there's their neighbour. They get paranoid and they would drill a heart thing and they would look through to listen to what they have to say. And they're so paranoid and uh, so they get the... Uh, of, um, I guess, uh, what's it called, the Sonata or whatever it is, and they will come in and they will arrest that neighbour because they think they're going against the regime. Um, and they will sort of, yeah. God, imagine if you lived, you lived and your, you, your neighbour's all nice to you and then all of a sudden they get so paranoid with each other and so they get arrested and once they get arrested they go <coughs> like that. That's how it is was in them a bit bad. I wouldn't like to live here. And this is the equipment because they're so paranoid they um, uh, shooting at sh sh people and the equipment of, um, because they're paranoid the filming and that. And this is the uh, film they used all over. A very paranoid people you know they were turning on each other it's uh imagine living there and you they're all smiling at you and then they see the next minute you're getting arrested and then you're thinking to yourself why am i getting arrested that's what it was like if they don't like somebody 
they will get paranoid and they think, oh, that person is talking about them or talking about something else, and then they get arrested. And, they, and it's quite sad. So you never know, you never... Uh, you you don't, can't really trust anybody. That's what it was all about. Hello. I'm ringing up about um, somebody, I think my neighbour. I think they're anti regime I think. And um, yeah, I think I've been listening, listening to them. So yeah, I think they're... Can you please come round and arrest them? Thank you very much. Bye. Somebody, somebody on the corner or something, yeah. I think they're anti regime Just, just please come. I don't like the look of them. Yeah. <laughs> 